We're gonna try this again. I can tell by the comments that a lot of you did not really fully understand what I was talking about last time. So we're gonna try it again. Um, first question, the shirt, where can you get it? Uh, there's a link in the description where you can get it. You can also go to my website, erickcortina.com. You can get it there. So, all right, that's out of the way. One of the most common questions or comments were, he measured jam and over time he's extending the bullet out, therefore he is chasing the lance. No, that, that's a big stretch. Here's what I mean by chasing the lance, right? So let's just say, again, let, let's start with, with the basics, right? There's a jump, there's in the lance, let's call it ITL, and then there's jam. Jump, no touch. The bullet is not touching the barrel in any way. In the lance, the bullet is touching. How much? Well, you can measure and find out. You can measure. Uh, the bullet can be in the lance for a certain amount. <sighs> In the lance is not a static measurement, or uh, it's not a definite measurement. It's it's a there's a space where it can touch, right? Uh, just like jump, you can have a very wide area where you're jumping. Uh, same thing in the lance, it's less. So in the lance is jam minus touch. <laughs> if you if you guys want to do a formula, jam minus touch equals in the lance. Okay, and of course jam is uh, stuck. Let's call it stuck. All right, bullet will not go farther into the barrel at jam. Be uh, less than jam, you're in the lance, but you're not jamming. And if you back off far enough, uh, at some point you're gonna be jumping. Okay, we got it? All right, so and like I said, jam is neck tension dependent. So the more neck tension you have, the farther you're gonna be uh, into the lands, okay? Because the bullet is just grabbing it more, so you can shove it farther in. There's also a lot of shooters that, that like to seat at jam and, and they just let the barrel seat the bullet. That's fine. If you wanna do that, that's fine. It is not reliable, okay? The benchers guys, a lot of them do that. That's fine. But if you're gonna be shooting F-Class or PRS, where at some point you have to open the bolt, maybe uh, you run out of time, or maybe you are shooting and the condition change and you wanna wait, and you wanna open your bolt, this is bad. You will stick a bullet in there. Don't take the chance. I'm not saying it's bad to seat there. I'm just saying it's not the best idea for reliability. Okay, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people are like, oh, he said jam is bad. I'm done, this guy's an idiot. I never said that, all right. Anyway, back to the video. So, I measure jam. Why do I measure jam? Well, this is your extreme place. That's as far as you can see the bullet. You cannot go farther out than that, okay? That's why I go to jam, okay? Y minus 20, that's 20 thousandths, by the way. Y minus 20. I just find that if you find jam and back off about 20 thousandths, you will no longer stick the bullet. Now you're, you're, you're in the lands, but you're not jamming, okay? You can go out farther out than 20, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's just a number, right? Because if I go to jam minus 20, let's say jam minus 20 is here, and this is, you only have one way to work from, okay? I could go jam minus 100, and then just test one way, you know, test both ways. Well, that, that, that just makes it complicated, right? Because now you have to test both ways. If you go to jam minus 20, you only have one way to go, which is away from the lance or seat the bullet deeper, all right? Now, this is where I think everybody got confused because I said jam minus 20, minus 23, minus 26. I did this for you. Because I know this is how you guys think. 
at least the majority of you, right? And they're like, well, I don't do jam, I do touch. Fine, touch, whatever, I don't care. The point is, whatever you do, this is how you do it, right? So if I ask you, what's your sitting depth? Well, I'm at 20 off the lands, off the lands. Or I see that 30 off the lands, right? That is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you're measuring from the lens. It's a, it's a moving target. You should never ever, especially if you're looking for precision, measure off of a moving target, right? You should never do this. Now you can, and most people do this. That's why this is confusing to a lot of people. So instead, this is what I do, okay? Again, I did this for you guys, but this caused more confusion than anything. So here's what I do, okay? So for example, the, I think the, the I, I did 155 was my example, all right? I actually don't do jump or whatever. I, if I, if, if jam, here, I'll do it over here. If jam minus 20 equals 2.155, then the next one is 2.152, 2.149, 2.146. And so on, okay? And then I know where my node is. Let's just say it shot from here to here. Then it's very easy for me to make a node say, my node is 2.143 to 2.149. How easy is that? And then my seating depth would be 2.148. That's it, I write it, write it down in my note, 2.148. That's it, that's the number, I, I literally remember those numbers in my head. It's that simple. I don't have to say, well, jam minus 20. That means different things to different people. Literally, I can hand you my load around. I can, I can bring five people here today and have them bring their calipers with their, uh, Ojive comparators, and I can hand the exact same round to five of you, and more than likely you guys are all gonna come up with a different dimension, right? There is no standard for these uh, comparators, right? So when people ask me, and this is the question that I get all the time, how far off the lands do these bullets like to be seated? I, I don't know, it, it's, you should never ask that question because that is a question that means something to one person and means the exact same different thing to another person. The problem is they don't know it. Why? Because their tools, there is no standard. <laughs> their tools are different. So if you don't believe me, measure around and have your buddy measure it. More likely it's gonna be different. So 2.148, that is where I'm seating my bullets, right? And I know from 2.143 to 2.149, that is my node. This is my node, okay? And then I said, as you shoot your barrel, I don't know, you get 100, 200, 300 rounds. Every now and then load to them at 2.151 and 2.154. Ah, you can do three or four of each, right? And then you shoot it. If your groups are and I'm gonna do 2.148 right here, okay? Let's say 2.148 is shoots tiny, like that. And 2.151 shoots big and big. You don't have to move, stay there. But I don't know, two, 300 rounds later, your test looks like this. Guess what, you can safely move to here and you're, you're safe, okay? So we're not chasing, remember when we do this test, we do not measure the lands. We don't care where the lands are. That's why I say I'm not chasing the lands. I am chasing my node. This is my node. I am making sure that I stay inside this node for the life of the barrel. How do I know I'm in the node? It shoots small groups. If it shoots a big group, stay off of it, okay? And then, like I said, if this happens, then your new seating depth is this. This is, let's just say we go and shoot this target and it looks like this, right? 
small, big, big, right? That means don't move, but they measure their lands and they were supposed to be seated at 20 thousandths off, okay? And uh, they measure their lands and now they're seated, now because of the land or throat erosion, they find out that they are 28,000, well, you know what, 30 thousandths off. What do they do? Now, they, they say, oh, my new seating depth is 2.158. This is what they do. They move their seating depth in one-to-one -one relation to the throat erosion. Without testing. This is where the problem is. They do this blindly, without testing. All I'm saying is don't do this blind. If you want to do this, fine, do it, I don't care. But test it, put it on target. If it doesn't shoot, go back. Don't worry about throat erosion and trying to keep this one-to-one -one relationship. All I'm saying is from my testing that I have done, throat erosion and node advancement, let's call it that, do not maintain a one-to-one -one relationship. As I said, sometimes I go the entire life of the barrel without ever having to move my seating depth. So obviously they do not maintain a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So that's why I say I am not chasing the lands. As a matter of fact, I never measure the lands except for when I measure jam and that's only to ensure that I stay away from jam so I don't stick a bullet and that I only have one way to work from. After that, I don't even reference jam anymore. I just go, for example, I can tell my 6BR, 1.812 is my sitting depth. My 6x47, 2.115, that's my sitting depth. It's really that easy. It's in my notes. I don't have to, I don't have to measure lance every time I load ammo to find out. I just know what it is. What if you are limited by mag length? Let's just say your jam is 2.150, all right? But your mag only allows 2.100. Doesn't matter. Treat this as jam, you know. Go 2.1 minus whatever you want to, what, whatever amount of clearance you want between your, your uh, bullet tip and your mag. Let's just say, I don't know, 50 thousands. Whatever you're comfortable with, okay? So now you're going to go 2.050. 2.047, 2.044, 2.041. That's what you're gonna test. You're gonna shoot groups and when it shoots, let's just say it shoots here. Well, there you go, your new seating depth is 2.046. That's it. Where are the lands? I don't, I don't know, I don't care. It shoots tiny groups. Why do we care where the lands are? If you're limiting my back length, that doesn't matter. You can still get it done. All right, now, another thing that I never said that people were saying that I said is that I said sitting depth is not important. It is extremely important. That's why I'm making a whole video about it. All I'm saying is that chasing the lands is not a good idea. That's all I'm saying. Why? It is, sitting depth is so important that I am saying don't change your sitting depth blindly trying to maintain a one-to-one -one relationship between seating depth and throat erosion because it is not like that, okay? Test on target. It is, seating depth is so important that you should never move it blindly simply because you have throat erosion, okay? What I'm saying is shoot at a target. It is so important that I say shoot at a target and verify that your node has moved. If your node has not moved, but your slants have, don't worry about chasing the lands. Chase the node, this is what matters. Small groups matter. <laughs> oh, I can see where this is going now. <laughs> anyway, small groups matter, okay? Lands don't. A lot of people have told me, hey, this is a, uh, I have experienced a one-to-one -one relationship. That's great. But it is, are you gonna tell me that it's gonna work for everybody? Are you gonna tell me that it works 100% of the time? No, this works 100% of the time. 
okay? This is why this is a better system. This works 100% of the time. Anytime you have a system that works 100% of the time and one that confuses most people, I mean, most people are confused about this. How many people are chasing the lands and having problems? If you have a system that has problems and one that's 100% accurate, which one do you think is better? Look guys, <laughs> I'm not very smart, so I have to come up with systems that uh, allow me to stay in tune without having to do this. Now, how do you, you know, how do you know you actually found jams? Sometimes the bullet will get pulled out, blah, blah, yes. But again, it doesn't matter. Now, Wheeler has uh, a really good method of finding touch. If you wanna work away from touch, that's fine. Use the Wheeler method, find touch, and work off of that. That's fine, it doesn't matter. The only reason that I don't use the Wheeler method is because I don't wanna strip my whole rifle down, or my bolt. Yes, I know it's not that hard, but I don't like doing that. It's, it's very simple to do it this way because I'm, I'm only going to do it one time. That's it, right? I'm going to do it one time just to I, so I know which point I need to stay away from. And that's it. So, um, if you have limited by mag length, uh, just treat mag length as jam. Another question that I had was, I measure to the lance or jam or whatever and I only have about 100 thousandths of the bullet in the neck. So here's the neck, right? Here's the bullet. There's not much of the bullet in here. VOD. <laughs> anyway, so, so there's not much bullet in here, right? Well, doesn't matter. See the deeper, I don't know, another 100 thousandths. You know, it, again, it doesn't matter. You're not trying to maintain an, any relation to the lance whatsoever other than make sure the rifle shoots. Seating depth, the node is a sine wave, all right? This is where you find uh, your accuracy. Here, 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 and it just keeps going, all right? so. This is longer, this is your uh, base to O drive. Longer, shorter. You keep moving deeper and deeper, you're gonna find it, it's gonna come in, the groups are gonna shrink like this, and then they're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and then smaller and smaller and smaller and bigger, bigger, smaller, smaller, so on and so forth, okay? This is why, and now these are different, different sizes, right? It's not a perfect sine wave. So you, you may have one like, that's like this and then this one may be real nice and flat and this one may be just, you know, super tight, whatever. So you can do a lot of testing and find the widest nodes, but the point is, this is why you hear people say, well, I like to see the 20,000 off the lance. Well, I like to see that 50,000 off the lance. Well, I find that you have to jump 100,000 off the lance. Guess what? You are all right. <laughs> Everybody's right because it's a sine wave. And again, some places it's wider than others. But that's how seating depth works, okay? So knowing that and knowing you know, that, that what I'm talking about, about uh, chasing your node, if you have, if you're limited by mag length, just go mag length and work off of that. You're gonna find it and uh, so on and so forth. I'm laughing because I'm about to drop something big on you and uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna catch a lot of hell for it, but it's okay. Here we go. Seating depth will tune any load. Seating depth will tune any load. You can literally pick a random load and seating depth will tune it. Is it the best load? Is it the best combination? No. This is the problem why a lot of people, the gun will shoot tiny at 100 yards and they go, it won't shoot farther out. Well, that's because they tuned a wrong powder charge, but that's another story for another day, right? But if you tune the right load, then it's gonna shoot farther out, okay? So, seating depth will tune any load. 
Again, it may not be the best load, but it will tune any load. Now, what do I mean by tune? You're gonna go through the same sine wave, okay? The groups are gonna get smaller. They may not get as small if you had the, uh, as if you had the correct node, but they will get smaller and bigger, okay? So, <laughs> that's that. Now, here's the big one. If you are hand loading, you must first select your powder charge. I select something and I do my powder charge tuning at jam minus 20. <laughs> I keep saying that just because that's what you guys understand. But like I said, I do um, in my, for example, my 6BR 1.812. I remember that because the war of 1812, so it's very easy to remember, right? This is hard, it, it doesn't mean anything. If I tell you jam minus 20, Hey, go, go load my ammo at jam minus 20, you're gonna have no idea. Or, or 20,000's jump. You're gonna, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Now, if I tell you, go load my ammo at 1.812, anybody can do this, right? This is why I'm saying, this is how you need to reference numbers. <laughs> you should never abbreviate a number. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I do my powder charge first at that sitting depth and then I do my sitting depth test and it's gonna be very close to, uh, to that. You know, I'm, I just do kinda like we talked about on the last video, just 3,000 increments and it'll shoot, okay? Um, now, if we say that sitting depth will tune any load, how many of you have shot factory ammo and you go and buy like, I don't know, five or six different brands of ammunition and you shoot them all through your rifle until you find the one that shoots best. What if I told you <laughs> that the only thing you did was find the one that had the right seating depth? <laughs> Again, they have different powder, different bullets, so all that actually matters, right? However, you can pick whichever one you want. I would, if I was gonna go and pick a factory ammunition for my rifle, I would shoot them over a chronograph and find the one with the lowest ES. And then I would do my sitting depth test on factory ammunition, right? And just seat them deeper in three thousandths increments until it's shot. I mean, it, it, when you buy it, it may be sitting here at the worst place possible. You may move it to five, uh, three, six, nine thousandths and find out that all of a sudden you shrink your groups. Now you have factory ammunition that shoots lights out in your rifle. Obviously it's better if you just buy one of my tuners, <laughs> but you can do that and it'll work. Why do I do this? Obviously you guys know I don't have to do this. A lot of people actually tell me, why do you do this? Just hang on to this information and uh, go out and win with it. Well, I've done plenty of winning and uh, I'm just trying to pass it on to you guys. I know there's a lot of guys that are frustrated with this uh, reloading and hand loading and shooting in, in, in uh, general, and they just having a rough time. They, they just seem that they can't get anywhere because everything they read, everything they try doesn't work for them. That's why I like to simplify stuff. Now, all this stuff I teach in my reloading classes when I do reloading classes, but this is hopefully will help a lot of you that are frustrated, that seem like you can't have a stable load, that you have a load that shoots great today and then it doesn't shoot next time. I'm hoping this will kind of get you excited about reloading again, get you back in the game and keep you from having to worry about your load and having to worry about maybe learning how to read wind, maybe learning the mental game of, the, of, the, of shooting sports. Uh, <clears throat> But anyway, if, if this will do that for you, then I'm satisfied. I had a few people that helped me when I got started and my goodness, they, they helped me tremendously. It, it, uh, it just, they made it exciting for me. Learning, I, I, I like learning and when they were teaching me stuff, they would just drop little crumbs here and there and I would, man, I would take those and run. So Mark Farr is one of those guys and Mike Downey, he was the other one that really helped me tremendously. Uh, Doug McIntosh, that's another one. He, he helped me a lot too. So there's a lot of guys that helped me when I started. And I just want to be one of those guys 
for you because I remember how excited I would get uh, and I'm hoping you are also getting excited and I'm trying to simplify this whole reloading thing for you because my goodness it, it just seems like they have made this thing so complicated that most people think you need a PhD just to load ammunition it's not that hard so especially if you understand it the way I understand it this is how I broke it down for myself and then once I did I realized oh this is really not that hard so anyway thank you guys for joining us uh, I hope this makes sense to you give us a like because that helps the channel grow subscribe if you haven't and I hope all your groups are one whole see you next time take care